Praise the Lord, saints. We are once again back in Bible study. Uh, we are still in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. We're talking about blessed are the peacemakers. Um, Matthew 5, verse 9 says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this moment, this time, and this place. God, we pray that you speak now for your servant is listening. God, we, we pray that you speak to your people, God. Speak to us, all of us. But we are in and still in a season, God, uh, a season of pandemic, season of unrest. But God, we ask that you speak now, God. We, we need to hear you. I need to hear you, God. Decisions need to be made. Uh, directions need to be taken. God, we pray for you to speak to us, God, uh, in this time where it doesn't seem to be peace, God. We pray that you equip us and give us and, and build the character in us that we may be peacemakers, God. Not only being a peacemaker, but, but the other characteristics that you called us to live out. God, I want to know what it means to be a real Christian. God, teach us now, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So we're talking about blessed are the peacemakers. And uh, we've talked about what is what does it mean to be a peacemaker. Uh, and, and we went through uh, all of those, all three of those points. And then we talked about, began talking about last week about growth as a peacemaker. And the question was, how can we grow as a peacemaker? And um, uh, the first thing we talked about was uh, to grow as a peacemaker, we must continually combat uh, sin in our own lives. By faith, we must continually obey, confess, repent. Uh, number one, identify, confess, and repent, and obey God. Uh, and so we, we have to be right with God before we even deal with other, other people because we're talking about standing in the middle and, and, ta and not taking sides but, bringing, but making peace. And so with that being said, you have to eliminate and begin with deal with the sin in your own life. I know that many of us, uh, when we get uh, disappointed or when we get frustrated, uh, a lot of times it's all about the other party. But uh, before we, we do anything, we have to make sure that uh, we, we've gotten ourselves together, amen, that we're right uh, with God so that we can hear him and his instructions that he has for us. Number two, to grow as a peacemaker, we must be painfully honest. And it's just time for us to be honest as, as, as individuals uh, because what is before us is, is, so, is so heavy, Um the fight that the enemy has brought to us <laughs> because brothers and sisters, he's bringing it to us. Uh, it, it calls for us be, because we love one another because we love the saints. It, it calls for us to speak truthfully uh, in love. Amen. So we, we have to call it like we said, we have to be honest. It's important. The kingdom is important. It's enough of that sugar coating and, and not trying to upset. Uh, we're not upsetting people to upset them. We're upsetting them so that we can get them right. Amen. So when somebody calls me into uh, calls me in on the carpet for something I may uh, have not done rightly, I don't I don't I don't take it personal. I, I, I analyze it. Amen. So as we deal with one another, we have to speak honestly and be willing. Amen. Be willing to to receive as well as give it. Amen. Number three, to grow as a peacemaker, we must be willing to risk pain. Amen. And this is where we left off the last time and uh, trying to restore people. Uh, is, is, a, is a risky business uh, because you often misunderstood, hated, and even persecuted. Uh, we see those in the Bible, uh, uh, the prophets that went before us, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, who is my all-time favorite, uh, uh, Jeremiah. They were preaching a message, even the minor prophets, not minor and what they done minor uh, because that's how the, <laughs> the Bible lists them, but uh, it, they, they, they are minor in, 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 in their content, I guess. But um, they, they spoke truth in love, amen, and, and many of them, uh, if not all of them, were persecuted in some type of way. They were, isol they were ostracized. They, were, uh, they, 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 didn't, they didn't take well what, what they had spoke, but they had to. Uh, Ezekiel went to the extreme, amen, to, to, uh, to present God's truth, amen. So it, he, was per he was hated, amen. Uh, Jeremiah was hated. Look at our, uh, our modern day, those who stand up for truth, those who stand up for peace. Uh, look at Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and, 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 and as a martyr. Look at, look at all those, uh, not just him, but there are many. Medgar Evers, there's many others that have gone before and tried to stand up for peace. And, and, and so we know that it, you must be willing to risk pain to be a peacemaker. 
And, and for, for many of us, for me as well, that, that, that hits home because many of us don't like pain. Uh, we want it to be easy. We want it to, but it's not, that's not the way ministry goes. There's crying sometimes. <laughs> There's bleeding sometimes. There's blood, sweat, and tears, but uh, we must, we must, we must maintain. Amen. So uh, to grow uh, where we left off last time, to grow as a peacemaker, we must develop communication skills. Amen. Uh, and, and this goes along with what I like, what I've been reading and, and something that has been missing uh, out of the church is, is uh, one of the things that, that have been mid- missing uh, as of late is emotional intelligence. Amen. So uh, it's one thing to have a great IQ, but to have a, to have emotional intelligence, uh, that, that, that is what is needed. Amen. And, and, and so when we look at this, to grow into as peacemakers, we must develop healthy communication skills. That's a part of emotional intelligence, being able to, to tell how you feel, be able to talk without losing your mind. Amen. Uh, amen. And once again, as I teach this, I doesn't, I don't teach this as a master. I teach this as a student. Amen. So to grow as a peacemaker, we must develop a healthy communication skills. Healthy communication includes being a good listener. James 1 verse 19 says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Note that he says we should be quick to listen. Literally, we must hurry up and listen. Typically, we, we only hurry up to speak. This leads to misunderstanding. As we often lack all the facts as believers, we, we, miss, we must listen. Uh, what what a per, number one to what a person is saying, number two to what a person is not saying. Uh, this includes asking clarifying questions to discern what is really going on. A lot of times we let people to speak, but well, a fear or anger, we don't ask clarifying questions uh, because for whatever reasons. But to get an understanding, you know, what did it say? Proverbs says, "In all I getting." Uh, we, we need to get an understanding, even dealing with, uh, with one another. So we must ask a uh, clarifying question of what's really going on and, and, and what is the root of the issue. People love to play games. Amen. They love to skirt around. They want you to figure it out. But as a Christian, as a peacemaker, we must be willing to get to the middle of it, to the what, what, what's really going on. Amen. Uh, we should number three, we should be listening to the Holy Spirit. Uh, we should shoot. We, we should shoot arrows of prayer up to God, engaging uh, when we engage in a potentially explosive conversation, this is what Nehemiah did as he dealt uh, with uh, King Artaxerxes as he went before him. Uh, and, and, and he, you know, he knew that uh, bringing up a, a subject to the to the king was dangerous to even speak or even show emotions in, in front of the king was dangerous. But yet and still he prayed about it and God opened the door, even as he was speaking. If you go back and read Nehemiah. Uh, he was praying under his breath. Amen. So when we deal with one another, uh, it has to be before we, we deal, uh, we have to pray. And even during while we're dealing with it, we have to pray after we, we have to pray. Amen. And, and, and so with that being said, uh, how many of us fall short? Amen. And properly in doing healthy communication. We may go back and forth with one another, but how healthy is it? God must be in the middle. God must surround Everything, all of our, it said, let your conversations be on what? Godly things. That's what the Bible says. So we must, we, on heavenly things, it must be on, on, on good things, amen, to uplift one another. And even when we, we're, we're trying to hold each other accountable, it must be godly. It must be out of humility, amen. So um, number, uh, the, the next thing, uh, we talk about developing healthy communication. Healthy communication also includes choosing our words and tone carefully. Uh, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27 says, uh, the true, uh, the truly, the truly wise person retains his words and the words who stays calm is discerning. Let me read that again. So, uh, Proverbs 27, 17 and 27 says the truly wise person restrains his words and the one who stays calm is discerning. Uh, to, re- to restrain one's word means to weigh them and consider their potential effect instead of simply speaking without deliberation. Man, I, amen, amen, and amen. There's, there's not much more to add to that. Many times we allow our emotions to speak, our anger to speak, without bringing into subjection to Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and, and all of our thoughts. Well, let's go. Let's go. To, let's find that scripture. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter ten, I believe.
Yeah, let me start with verse 1. A lot of times we just get to the meat of it, but this is Paul defending his ministry. And he says, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, by the humility and gentleness, I'm reading this from the NIV, by the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I'm away. Now, he's making fun uh, of these people because this is the rumor. Uh, amen. I wish I could go on off of that, but <laughs> this is the rumor. Uh, that people are speaking behind the pastor's back. Amen. And this is what they have to say. But he tells them, I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be bold as I expect to be towards some people who think they that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, that we may take captive every thought and to make it obedient to Christ. Amen. So when we deal with this, when we when we're dealing with this, we have to bring even our thoughts. We have to bring in into subjection in the arguments that we have. We have to bring it under subjection uh, of Jesus Christ. Those thoughts. Amen. Those thoughts will cause us to say things, amen, that are not of God. And we have to bring it, even in our even in our conversations with one another, even though it may get heated and you may disagree. I, I can't stand the statement, uh, agree to disagree. That is not godly. That is not of God, amen. We must agree, amen. Uh, how can two walk together unless they agree? So we've we got to agree, but there's a way to coming to that conclusion, amen. So uh, we, we must do this out of love, amen. We must do this out of love, and we, we, we can't uh, afford to offend. And, and through the years, amen, the way that ministry has been done sometimes, mistakenly, even, and even for myself, uh, I've had to repent, amen, because this is not the way God would have us to do. And that's why many of our churches and many of us are limited, because we, are not, we have assigned to do things the way the world does it, and not the way that God would have us to do it. Amen. So uh, uh, healthy communication also including controlling our anger. James 1 and 20 says for anger, for human anger, human anger, human anger. And we talked about that in the Nehemiah defending you. We want to defend God's word. Uh, we don't want to get caught up in defending our own emotions and our own thoughts, our own, because our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. So a lot of times we get, uh, we get caught up defending what we think is right. But we must be ready to defend God, the, the, the word of God and the righteous, though his righteous. We must be able to defend that. But our own personal stuff, uh, man, we got to lay that aside. Amen. So, so when we uh, healthy communication is controlling and uh, controlling our anger. So we must not hurt one another. We must speak truth and love, truth and love, truth and love, not truth to hurt, not truth to main, not truth to get somebody in in their proper place. Truth in love amen uh number five to grow as a peacemaker and, and this is probably where uh i know i'm already talking about ending <laughs> but this is where i'll probably stop for today because i have much to say about this one so uh to grow as a peacemaker we must return good for evil since the, since the peacemaker is often misunderstood criticized and even persecuted we make we must make peace by sowing seeds of peace Romans 12, 8, uh, 18 through 20, and this is where we'll spend the bulk of our time, the rest of our time, uh, the, I, 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 I'm anticipating the rest of our time. It may not take that long, but uh, I really was, was really, really taken back by these last, uh, these last three points, five, six, and seven. Uh, and, 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 but this one is, we must return good for evil. Since, uh, so Romans chapter 12, verse 18 through 20, it says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all people. Do not avenge yourselves, dear brothers, but give place to God's wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Rather, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on his head. Do not, become, do not, over, do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Amen. So as we sow peace, Lord willing, it, it will create righteousness. James 3 and 18 uh, in the NIV says, peacemakers who, who sow in peace reap a harvest 
of righteousness. So are you willing to return e good for evil? But but let me let, hold on just for a moment, because we are we are we are we are called to live peaceably with all men, whether they are believers or not. Uh, but we are to live at peace. We are to, to, to promote peace. Amen. We are to treat them out of love. Amen. But there, there are, but it uses the word. And, and I think I've taught this before. I know I have on Sunday, uh, if possible, that's what it says. If possible. And I may have taught this on Wednesday night, but if possible, that's what the text says. If possible, the believer is to live at peace with all men. And, and it, it is, it, it, we live in this world and we know that it is not always possible especially living in the climate that we live. Uh, there is just, the, 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 amen, uh, the climate in which we live, there are just some men uh, who are so influenced by evil that uh, only God can change them. And, that, and, and first and foremost, only God can change uh, people's attitudes and people's behaviors. Only God can do that. And, and as a leader, I'm learning that. It hurts. It's hard. You're looking for uh, every sermon after, after every sermon to see people change or to see that God's word is taking effect in their lives. But it's slow. Uh, and a lot of times it doesn't take hold because if you go back to the word of God, uh, some of them are not ready to receive the seed. Amen. Y'all know the parable of the seeds. Amen. Some folks soil is not ready, but we must endure. We must preach, uh, pastor. We must we must teach, teacher. We must lead, leader. Uh, even if even in situations where people are not going to, because there are some people who are just troublemakers, amen. In the world and even inside the church, there are some people who are just grumblers, uh, who complain all of the time. No matter what the pastor does, they find a way to complain, even though God has not called them. Uh, to to lead that particular church, not at that season in time, but they, amen. That, but they're going to complain because they can't control. Uh, you got folks who are dissenters. You have uh, the enemy uses people to split the church, split uh, friendships, split relationships. Uh, matter of fact, one of the relationships that I'm involved in now is 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 is, is uh, amen uh, with a group uh, a group that it, it, there's, we're seeing some opposition. Amen. And there's a threatening to split apart all because, amen, because the enemy has, has sown seeds, amen. But the devil is a liar, amen. God is, 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 <laughs> God is more, is, is able, amen, now, now to him who is able, amen, to do exceedingly abundantly all that we ask or think. God is able, amen. We, we know that he's able. Uh, we give him praise because he's able, amen. But you just have some, amen, that, that, that are not godly. Uh, that are in a form of godliness, amen. Uh, but they, they, you have those who, who, who complain, dissenters, splitters, fighters, ego hunters, self-centered leaders, uh, image seekers, power builders, whoremongers, uh, warmongers, amen. Uh, some person, some people just have no interest in living at peace, not even in church, uh, unless they're in control, amen. Uh, but it says, if possible, as much as possible, the believer is to live at peace with all men. The believers to work for as much peace as possible. Some level of harmony and, and concord can be achieved at least uh, some of the time. Amen. And even if not, the believers not to give up, not as long as there hope to some degree of peace. My brothers and sisters, it, it's about this is on God. And, and when we look at this text, he says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Uh, we must pray for understanding. We must pray for perseverance and, and and when we when it's time for closure we must pray for closure that god opens up another door sometimes there's just some places they're just not able to receive amen um amen <laughs> what did what did jesus tell his disciples when when they're not able to receive go to the edge of city dust your feet when you've done all that you can do amen dust your you know amen dust the dust dust off and keep it moving amen sometimes that's that's what we have to do but we have to endure until god says different amen um the one thing my brothers and sisters when we talk about whether the uh whether other men want to be peaceable with us or if we live in a world that is torn to where that can't peace can't be achieved we uh the conflict must not arise from us it, it, it can't it, it, as a lead as a believer we can't be the cause even jesus had to deal with uh, sometimes even Jesus was confrontational. Even Jesus, what did he do? He set right the temple twice. Amen. Uh, he went over, kicked over, and he did it because they were sinning against God's house. 
not because of what they did, not because they didn't like him. He never took action on anybody who disliked him. But when they sinned and when they um, begin to rep their truth, they call themselves representing God, but they are not who they say they are. He calls them out. Amen. Amen. So so we must uh, we the conflict must not arise from us. Uh, but we, we must we must be <laughs> we must be able amen we must be willing to work uh, to 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 live out peace with all men and whether they want to or not sometimes we just have to uh, to to allow them amen and pray for them we must pray we must continue to pray that God brings all men because we are ministers of reconciliation uh, as a peacemaker but some men uh, there are some that are just not uh, don't have God's spirit in house and out of the house. But we have to we have to hold them accountable. We have to stand strong. We can't give up. Uh, we have to seek what God is wanting to do. God is more powerful uh, than what the enemy has to say. Amen. So as we sow in peace, and that's why we must be willing to sow peace, because righteousness, we can't be caught up in on the getting people back. And, and, and many people are caught up in that if you did me one way, I'm going to do you back, even in the church. And, and that God cannot be glorified. Uh, when we have that attitude. So we, as we sow in peace, Lord willing, we must create righteousness. That's James 3 and 18. Peacemakers who sow in peace, that's what, and this is the scripture, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Are you willing, are you, uh, are you willing to return good for evil? My brothers and sisters, there is a lot of good that needs to be done in our, in our community, in our churches, uh, in our city, in our world. And are we willing to, to do that? Are we willing to turn return good for evil? Because as a leader, uh, man, I have been offended. My feelings have been hurt to the very core. Uh, but we, we, we must, amen, we, we have to be. And, and, and sometimes our maturity level is shown to us by how we respond. Uh, I've had to repent uh, for, for, for some things that uh, even though my heart was in the right place because I didn't do it in a godly fashion. Uh, what I did was not received, amen, and I had to go back and repent, apologize, and even though we're trying to go somewhere, uh, we, we have to be careful because it has to be God all the time. Uh, the flesh cannot glory, and especially in the church. We can't lead the church. Uh, I don't care where you work. I don't care what experience in life or if you are the president of the United States, you're ill-equipped to lead God's church unless God has called you, equipped you, Filled him with your spirit, gave you the gifts to endure and, and to do it. Amen. Not everybody is fit. Everybody thinks they're a leader, uh, but but we have to do what God. We have to <laughs> we have to operate in God's uh, the anointing and the and the gifting that He's given us. And that's why many fail uh, because they're not in their lane. Amen. I don't know how I got way off in that, but this we must as peacemakers we must return good for evil. And I wanted to highlight that there are just some. Amen. Uh, many people get their feelings hurt because they're trying to pursue uh, peace with people. And it seems as though, but the warfare, and, and as I've read in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, our warfare is not carnal. So we have to pray. We have to seek God. I, I know feelings get hurt. I know I, 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 if you're used to living by way of your emotions, making decisions based off your emotions, giving our, giving these situations and these things that hurt so bad back to God sometimes is very difficult. And I and trust me, I, I know uh, what that means. But we have to in order for God, because this is all about God getting the glory. Once again, there's a book. If you are uh, I, I, if you are part of New Hope Baptist Church, even if you would like to have a copy of this, uh, if you are listening, it's called "It's Not About Me: The Keys of Sacrificial." service for God. This is not, don't, this is free. I can even give you the website to where you can go find it, rockofages.org. Uh, but this is a, a great book. If you are looking to be a leader or you're looking to uh, uh, walk in discipleship, uh, begin disciple, well, knowing where you fit in the household of God, I encourage you to read this. If you want it from me, I'll email it to you or I'll give you my copies or what I have. And it's called, It's Not About Me, The Keys of Sacrificial Service for God. And I encourage you, uh, it, it, please look me up. Hit me up. <laughs> Hit me up. I bet you if I had some cowboy tickets, amen. <laughs> if I had some cowboy tickets included, uh, I would get plenty of calls, amen. But really, amen, if you're looking for this source, please, I will be, I'm more than willing to give it to you. 
Uh, okay, so uh, how much time do I have here? All right, so we're going to wrap that up right there. Uh, but the next time we're going to talk about to grow as a peacemaker, we must develop perseverance. And to grow as peacemakers, we must trust God. Amen. Uh, that man, that's amen. So uh, as we move forward, hopefully next week we'll conclude our lessons and um, we'll have an announcement next week about what we're going to do for uh, do going forward. Uh, I, I think that... Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I don't want to announce anything that <laughs> yet. So uh, be prayerful. Uh, there are going to be some changes in, in how we do this. So uh, uh, please, next week, we'll we'll announce. Uh, I'm not ready to announce that today. So uh, may God bless you. May God keep you as I pray. We pray. We pray that you please come and see us on Sunday. We are preaching through Ephesians. What it, uh, we are learning uh, what it means to be a Christian. We are uh, what God has called us to do, to what does it mean to be a child of God? All that Ephesians is 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 tailor fitted, Amen, uh, to equip us to walk in who God has called us. Uh, the whole Bible, Amen. But Ephesians is where we are today. Uh, we were learning what it means to be a child of God, Amen. So, uh, uh, what does it mean to be a Christian? So we are uh, walking through the prayer of Paul, uh, chapter ver chapter one, verse fifteen through twenty three. I believe we're on verse twenty one right now. Hopefully we can get, we can, uh, man, it's been so good. Amen. I've been excited to preach every Sunday, but come and see us. Uh, if not, uh, look us up on Facebook live uh, for now. Amen. For now, uh, there, there may be changes in that as well. So be prepared. God is moving in a different direction this in this season. And we, we're listening to what he's trying to say. So uh, may God be, may God bless you. And may God keep you is my prayer. Once again, if you can't, uh, uh, if you can't make it on Sunday, 1305 Northwest 9th Avenue, New Hope Baptist Church. Please look us up on Facebook Live. Uh, if you want to give to uh, the New Hope Baptist Church, uh, we have a Givelify app, which you can be found on Amazon or Amazon, Android or uh, iPhone, that other phone. <laughs> Amen. So uh, you can look up the app, Givelify app. Look up New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, Amarillo, Texas. May God bless you and may God keep you as our prayer. I pray that something that we said today will help you grow. 